And welcome to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence and today we're talking about a very bad deal that happened in Genesis 25 verse 29 to 34. But let's pray first. Father, I pray that you will help us to learn the best we can from this bad decision that Esau made in the Bible and help us to apply this wisdom to our life. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Pastor Lawrence. It's always good to be back with you. And today we are talking about a bad deal. Now, when if you think about a bad deal, everyone has definitely made a bad deal in their life. If you think about, um, you know, a used car dealership, we all had that experience or we all know people that had that experience where you buy a car when you get home it's nothing nothing like what they promised you and then you also have you know online shopping um, if you look at all the ads passing by your feed and email and inbox every day and you look at all that amazing pictures and when you order it most of the time it's 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 a bad deal and then you also have the TV infomercials. I don't know if you remember that, but way back then we had the TV infomercials where they just say, okay, call this number, call now and um, get, get one and wait there's more and get another one free and wait there's more, get a third one for free. All these things. And um, they definitely ended up, ended up in a lot of bad deals. And then you also have Craigslist. I don't know if you ever bought anything from Craigslist. I remember I sold my car on, on Craigslist and that was definitely not the best deal for me because I sold it, but I had to give a lot of discounts. And then you have these websites, you know, where you can book hotels. And um, sure, I was shocked a few times, you know, the pictures, how beautiful these rooms are and it's a perfect location and, you know, on and on. And then when you reach the place it doesn't look like the picture <laughs> and it is just like nothing nothing they promised i remember my friends told me they booked this hotel with a beautiful sea view and um, the person said there's you know everything is near there are restaurants and shopping malls and you know on the on the pictures and on the website it looked like this amazing place it was in jeju my friend said when they arrived at this hotel it happens to be a three-story building so when they got into the room you know they met the owner and they asked him so where is all you know these restaurants and and shops where, where they can go shopping and the owner said oh just just take the elevator to the first floor there's a see you <laughs> so that was the shopping and restaurants that he promised on the website and um it he happens to be the owner of that hotel and the CU. And they say the sea view that that was promised, you know, that they showed in the pictures was if you stand and look at a specific angle through the window, you could see the sea very, very far off. So it's a very funny story, but it's true. A lot of us had these bad deals. Now, Bible characters also made some bad deals. You know, if you think about Adam and Eve, how they lived in this beautiful garden, how they were walking with the Lord, how that everything provided for them. And then the devil came and he um, tempted them to eat from, the, from that fruit they were not allowed to eat from. And they actually made a bad deal. And then they lost everything. Just imagine that, being kicked out of that beautiful garden, losing everything. Um, that was a really bad deal. And then you have the people of Noah's days. You know, they also made a bad deal. These people were so sinful, just continuing with all the wrong things they did. So much so that God decided, I'm going to wipe the earth. I am going to wipe all human beings from the face of the earth. And as you might remember, Noah and his family was the only family that survived the flood because God told Noah to, to build an ark. And the amazing thing is Noah believed God and he built that ark. And God gave him this, this strange um, um, instructions that he had to get two of each animal, you know, two bugs, two ladybugs, two bees, two mosquitoes, two flies, two lions, two elephants, 
just uh, think about that miracle. You know, I don't know if I could ever say yes to something like that. How in the world and where in the world will I find two of each living thing on this planet? How can you um, catch two of the same butterflies or the same whatever, you know, worms? And it's just amazing. On the day, not before, not after, on the day, this thing that God told Noah to do had to happen on that day. I just believe as Noah looked and think, how in the world am I going to get all these animals in the first place? And then secondly, how am I going to take care of them? But anyways, as he looked down the hill, just imagine this beautiful sight of all these animals coming two by two, two lions, two elephants, two monkeys. I remember as a kid in my um, Bible, we had these beautiful um, drawings of Noah's Ark and how the animals came two by two from the butterflies, the monkeys, the lions, elephants. Just think how big this miracle was. Just think about these people from Noah's time, how they saw him building this ark and how they saw in the end all these animals came to the ark. I believe they saw it, but still they did not repent. And the Bible said they were marrying and working and going on, on with their sinful lives until the day the rain started. So they had a very bad deal and they lost their lives. And then you have Pharaoh and he also made a bad deal. You know, the story of Moses and Pharaoh. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh 10 times. 10 times he went to Pharaoh and said, Listen, Pharaoh, this is the deal on the table. Let God's people go so that they can sacrifice. And every time Pharaoh said no. And as you know, the, the 10 plagues came. The first time, you know, it was like the water turned into blood and the frogs and the mosquitoes and 10 times Father made a bad deal. Every time God um, offered him a deal, he just said no, no, no. In the end, he said, okay, let them go. And still, still, he, he followed them into the Red Sea and he died. So he, his whole army, all the firstborns, all the animals, a lot of things happened to, to Egypt during this this bad deal that Pharaoh made. And then you have David. David, little boy David, taking care of his sheep, writing half of the Bible, or well, not half the Bible, but most of the Psalms and on and on, and getting to know his God behind you know, the sheep. And then it was Goliath. So David went to Goliath and in 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 a few seconds he killed Goliath and he, and later on he became king and he was a man after God's own heart but then one day he was supposed to be with the armies fighting and in the first thing was he did not uh, went with the armies he, he stayed home and as he walked on the roof of his palace he saw Batsheba taking a bath and he fell in love. You know, he was, I want to marry this woman. So he asked, um, who's the husband? And they told him. As soon as David found out who her husband was, as you know, he organized this whole plot where he had him killed so that he could marry her in the end. And they had a child together. It's like, it sounds like a real drama. And um, the child got sick and he died because God said, because of this, David, you're going to lose the boy. Anyways, my point is David had a bad deal with Bathsheba. Now today, we are looking at this Old Testament character called Esau. Now Esau was the firstborn son of Isaac and Rebekah. He was the, ten, the twin brother of Jacob. So this you can read in Genesis 25, 21 to verse 26. And he was loved by Isaac. He was a skillful hunter. This we read in Genesis 25, verse 27 to 28. Now Esau was a man who, who had his good side also. He wasn't just bad. He showed kindness to his brother who had deceived him. In Genesis 33, verse 1 to 16, we read that story. And he helped bury his father Isaac. This you can go and read in Genesis 35, verse 29. 
And on two occasions he was deceived by his brother Jacob. The first one was when Esau sought his birthright for a bowl of pottage. And this we read in Genesis 25, 29 to 34. The second time was when Jacob stole the blessing designed for Esau. And this story is in Genesis 27, verse 1 to 41. In Hebrews 12, verse 16 and 17, we read, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how they afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So he sought his birthright, brothers and sisters, for a meal. This is what he did. And even here, Hebrews 12, 16, 17, the Bible says that he was a bad person <laughs> in a way. And he repented. He was looking for forgiveness with tears, but it wasn't given to him. Brothers and sisters, we also do things like Esau. We also walk the wrong roads. We also do the wrong things. And for us, because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, because we believe in Jesus, we can say, I'm sorry. We can ask for forgiveness. We can repent with tears. And in our case, we are forgiven. That is the good news. Now, as we look at this man, Esau, we'll examine this passage as well as others that might, that might give us insight into the scripture's low opinion of him. My hopes is that we will see possible parables with his life and how to avoid those things that caused heaven's bad opinion of, of him. Now, Esau sold his birthright. Let's read the story in Genesis 25, 27, 34. And the boys grew, Esau and Jacob. And Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. Now Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his vengeance, and Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob boiled pottage, and Esau came in from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me first thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I'm about to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me first. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. So this is the story, and let's just look at this, Esau and Jacob. So Esau, to start with, was a hunter. He was a man of the field. He was out there the whole day, every day, hunting. And on the other hand, you had Jacob, who was more a quiet man, who were dwelling in tents and stuff like this. Now Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his food. As we all know, the road to a man's heart is through his mouth. <laughs> So Isaac loved him, but Rebekah loved Jacob, you know, um, so daddy loved I, um, Esau and mommy loved Jacob. Now, this happened when Esau came, he was so hungry and he said, okay, you can have my birthright, just give me food. I mean, just think how hungry he must have been to say, I'm going to die. And Jacob made him swear, and he swore, and by what he said, he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And this was not just a little thing, it was a big thing. It had long consequences, and he made a really, really bad deal, maybe the worst deal of his life. Now let's try to understand the birthright. The physical advantage of the birthright is contained in a double portion of the father's inheritance. This you can read in Deuteronomy 21, 17. Now, the amount would have been very great. But for what he eventually received, it was also great. That you can read in Genesis 36, verse 6 to 7. Rule and authority over the members of his family. This was the next thing he would get as 
this birthright, Genesis 27, 29, you can read it. And the spiritual advantages of this particular birthright was you know, being the priest of the house and the chief of the chosen family and her of the promised blessings. And then also able, able to invoke the blessing of Abram regarding to the threefold promise you can read in Genesis 28, 4, 12, verse 1 to 3. Now such were the issues at stake when Jacob and Esau talked about this birthright when they made this bad deal. Now let's look at Esau's bad deal. Esau chose the sensual over the spiritual. He was hungry. His flesh said, I want food. And he didn't care about the spiritual. Brothers and sisters, doesn't this sound familiar? Doesn't we make this choice on a daily basis, selling our eternal birthright for the sin and the stuff of this world? He gave into the cravings of his hunger. We read this Genesis 25 verse 27 to 34. He valued that red pottage more highly than his birthright. How many things, brothers and sisters, do, do we value higher than our eternal birthright? For this reason, he was called a profane person. That we read in Hebrews 12 verse 16. Esau chose the present over the future. Many times, many a time, we as humans just look at the nice stuff that we want to do and that we are doing. And we think, ah, oh, it's okay, but it's ruining our spiritual future. He tossed away future rewards for present gratification. The potage may have filled his hunger for the day, but what happened in the future was really, really bad. This too made him a profane person. For temporary physical pleasure, Esau sold his birthright, and that was a bad deal. Now, stupid is as stupid does. For as Gum said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Stupid is as stupid does. Esau, he was really stupid. Now, Esau's inheritance is estimated over a million dollars. Just imagine over a million dollars uh, a few thousand years ago, the value of that. Well, you know, on a daily basis, we go and eat soup in different kitchens. And our grandmothers cooks the best soup, you know, um, seaweed soup and all these soups. And just imagine selling your birthright, selling your your inheritance worth a million dollars or more just for some soup, it just gives you some idea how little he thought about his inheritance. We would all agree this is definitely the definition of stupid is as stupid does. Now, are we selling our birthright? This is the question. Let's bring the story home and bring it to us. Our birthright as Christians. Let's look at this. We are heirs according to the promise made to Abram. This we read in Galatians 3, 26, 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you obey Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So brothers and sisters, because we believe in Jesus Christ, we are also heirs of this Abraham's seed. We are joined here with Christ. Now Romans 8 verse 16 and 17, the Spirit itself breathes witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then hers, hers of God and joined hers with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Hallelujah. We are hers according to the hope of eternal life. Yet Titus 3 verse 7 that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are heirs of the kingdom which He has promised. Isaiah 2 verse 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which He have promised to them that love Him? 
And number five, our inheritance is incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven. My brothers and sisters, listen to this. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Look at that, my brothers and sisters. You have an inheritance, an incorruptible inheritance, an undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved for you and me in heaven. Hallelujah. You know, we have our cars, we have our houses and our investments, and life is life. But this is fading. But there in heaven is this inheritance that will not fade. Your birthright is secure. I know, you know, we all think about how can we be secure our money and investments and stuff. Well, there's um, something that's really secure, and this is this, this birthright of um, salvation. As long as you don't make a bad deal. Are you making a bad deal, brothers and sisters? And I ask this question to myself first. How might we, how might we sell our birthright? Well, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And Isaiah 4, verse 4 say, Ye adulteress and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Brothers and sisters, what? A strong verse. What a strong verse that if you indulge in these things, you are you are an enemy of God, tangled up in the pleasures of sin. Hebrews eleven twenty four twenty six. We are asking the question: How are we selling our eternal birthright? Let's read. By faith, Moses, when he was came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So Moses had everything. He could enjoy sin. Just imagine what these people were doing in those days, just like today. But he decided to walk away from all these riches, from all these parties and sin and whatever, because he esteemed Christ more important. Tangled up in our walk, Galatians 5, verse 16 and 18 to 21, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I just want to read this again. Brothers and sisters, are you living in the fleshly, lustful, sinful ways? Well, the Bible says, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, look at this, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lawless, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelers and the like of which i tell you beforehand just as i also taught you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the king the kingdom of god just look at this list my brother and sister and um i think we can all see our name somewhere in these words adultery fornication idolatry on and on Brothers and sisters, we are selling ourselves on a daily basis and it looks terrible and it is terrible. But on the other hand, that's why we have Jesus. That's why we have the cross and that's why we can say, God, I'm sorry. Brothers and sisters, just say, I'm sorry. Well, I will be the first one to say, I'm sorry, God. Bottom line, your deal is being made daily. You make your deal every day. Every day these temptations come to us. 
And then it is not what you say, it's more what you do. That's what Jesus said when he said in Luke 9.23, Then he said to them all, If anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is a daily thing. How can we overcome lust and sinfulness and all these things? By living in the Spirit. There is a way out and that's by living in the Spirit. I don't even know where to start and how to explain living in the Spirit. But let but let the Holy Spirit take you to that place where you can live in Him free of sin. Conclusion. Esau made a bad deal. He made a bad deal from a temporal point of view. He sold his birthright. He lost his inheritance. He made a bad deal from an eternal point of view. He is never referred to in a positive light again. He is always an example of the wrong. What he traded lost he lost forever hebrews 12 16 and 17 Esau, who for one morsel of food saw this birthright for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place for repentance through though he sought it diligently with tears wow he was looking for that blessing he wanted to inherit that blessing and he was rejected. Brothers and sisters, we all want to inherit eternal life. In our case, we say, Jesus, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. And you will inherit your inheritance. Hallelujah. Two people offer you a deal. You have the devil for that offer you the year and the now. And then you have Christ that offers you the then and the there. And by the way, Jesus signed his deal with his own blood. My brothers and sisters, the question comes to us, what will we do? We have a choice daily, and I know it's tough, it's not easy, but just be of strong hope and know that Jesus will help us to overcome. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can pray together today, and Lord, we just talked about all these bad deals and our own bad deals that we make on a daily basis in our life. Lord, please help us, Lord, to make better deals. Father, I really want to live by your Spirit. Lord, I see the flesh at work in my own life daily. And I pray, Lord, start with me. Start with Pastor Lawrence and help me to live by the Spirit, not by the flesh. And Lord, so I pray for my brothers and sisters watching this video. Please help all of us, Lord, to live by the Holy Spirit, not by the flesh. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please go and make good decisions so that you get the best deals for this time to come. From me, Pastor Lawrence, goodbye and God please. Bye-bye.